Hey YouTube, it's Demetri. Today we're gonna to talk about why I am not going to academia just yet. Um, I have been toying with this idea. I know many of you out there have seen other you know videos, been years back probably. And it's me talking about like the, the grass is always greener, right, on the other side of this. So you've got industry on one side, which is where I've been grinding at. Um, and then you've got academia on the other side. And academia just seems so wonderful, so peachy. Uh, and then I read <laughs> um, articles or there's like a video. Maybe I'll throw some links above and below of other things you guys can watch about how corrupt and corrosive uh, the academic life is. Um, churning out nonsensical papers trying to get funds just to fund your research and you have to get grants and it's like you're kind of begging and groveling for these sorts of things. Um, you don't get the impact that you get at working at a fund. And why this is all coming up here is one of the top rated uh, financial engineering master's programs, according to, you know, some of the rankings or whatnot, it reached out to me and they said, hey, you know, uh, we would love for you to apply for a new executive director position. Uh, the program is looking for a new executive director. We think you might be a fit. Again, it's not a job offer, right? Let's be real here. It's not a job offer. Um, it was more or less like they wanted to have the discussions and talk about it and put a resume together and send it in and make a case um, for running this program. And of course, part of this deal that would have been put together um, was doing research course for the university, um, running the curriculum, setting the curriculum for the program, uh, managing everybody in the program, all right? So marketing and you know, career development and all these things. And of course, these are right up my alley, right? I mean, I like to do research. That's what I like to do. Um, I love working with students. I love career development. I ramble on this whole YouTube channel on career development. Uh, I know the material, I've worked in the industry, I'm building out models, right? Uh, and so I looked at the offer and almost instantly I knew I was gonna reject this. This wasn't really even a consideration here. Um, and let's talk about why I have so quickly rejected this. One, um, probably the main reason here is I have unfinished business to do here in the industry, um, specifically at Agora Data, so the company that I'm at now, we have this whole modeling paradigm we've built out and it's a whole new modeling framework um, for the credit risk side here. So generating credit sorts of products. Uh, it can work across all different types like mortgages, um, auto loans. We can do it for credit cards. It, it's a pretty really, it's a really cool process. It's proprietary of course, because you know I'm generating this awesome framework for the firm. So we've built this from the ground up feel like I'm so close, but every single day slips by me and I'm just not quite there of really getting that value added there. And of course, being the quant that I am, um, I, I don't have time. I don't have time to read what I want to read. Um, for those of you that don't know, I love time series. It's like the thing that I eat, sleep and breathe. And part of this project with the credit scoring, everything is time series related. And oh, man, anyways, there's this book here. It's uh, time series analysis, forecasting and control. This is my box and Jenkins. Um, I built time series models um, for the banks doing box Jenkins back in 2014. Um, then I consulted another global bank, even larger bank on time series modeling, um, both for operational risk modeling. Um, there's a couple other ones. Um, and I had some great nights in New York City, staying up to like two in the morning, um, going up and down these like 60 flights of elevator bays and everything. I don't know, sitting in the executive offices and then running down to random floors in the middle of the night, like shuffling through these buildings, uh, trying to find the one quant that's sitting at a desk somewhere with their light on. Like there's there's no one else on these floors. There's a handful of people scattered um, and C-Car uh, required, the submission was due the next day. And so I'm like running in there and, you know, trying to help them. And I was like, okay, okay. I rewrote all your documentation. This is what the model needs to look like. And then going back in and telling them how to correct the model, make the corrections, fix all the requirements, refit the model, get the data, get the charts, update the final few pieces of the documentation and send them all off. Um, so yeah, time series is kind of my obsession. It's something I like doing. Um, I often don't venture too far out of the box Jenkins approach. Yes, there are other things we can do like um, Markov chains and all that whole other topic. Um, but I have all these problems to do. I have all this reading to do. I have, in my mind, right, as a quant, I have problems I want solved, right? I 
I get the business wants them solved, you know, pat on the back for that. But I want to solve them. Uh, I have things that I want to do. And unfortunately, academia typically doesn't have good problems, right? I mean, all these ideas, all these models, all these frameworks that I'm building up that haven't been done before, um, it's because uh, we we have an industry and we have real data and I have real issues because we have a real problem here. So the number one reason why I turned this down and didn't even consider it, didn't even pursue it, was solely for the fact that I have problems in the industry I want solved. Now, the second piece of this is... <sighs> The Peter Carr piece just haunts me. So I'll play a clip here. I was leading a pretty big quant group called Market Modeling, um, about 70 people in four different offices around the world. Um, and it was very time constrained, okay? Like, um, you just have no time. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so when I started the role in 2010, I mean, I basically did nothing but, you know, respond to email and meet people for a year and um, it was kind of like not so satisfying. So um, so a friend of mine named Attilio Mucci, he, had, he sent me an email just sort of asking a technical question. And um, like, to my surprise, I spent the next three days trying to answer his question, ignoring everything else. <laughs> and you know, it was like- uh, It's interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just, you know, so, so I kind of at that point realized it's, I'm really an academic at heart. but. Peter mentions, you know, as you get to the senior levels, uh, you start to go through this process where it's like he's just looking at emails. And as he's looking at emails, he looks over the last year. He's he's just doing management work now. Like he's not doing the quant work here. Um, and I feel like that often now, which is, you know, that leans me towards the academic side a bit. Um, yes, I am the head of the department. Yes, I run all the model development, model validation, quantitative strategy, and now model implementation. Um, I'm covering almost full stack at this point. Uh, there are some pieces we aren't doing, so anyways. Uh, but yeah, we're doing a lot of work here. And then I looked at this comment from Peter Carr, and it was like they had this really interesting problem. And like it, this 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 conversation I have with him, I just I replayed in my head. It's it just constantly plays uh, as I think about these things because, you know, it's the realization that I have to have a foot in two two jobs at once, right? I I have a foot in the head management role. I'm in charge of hiring. I'm in charge of planning um, and putting all the right pieces together and seeing the big picture and working with executives and the other teams and bringing all these pieces together here. Um, working on, for example, securitizations here. So, you know, I always hear people say, Dimitri, you work in risk management. You're not a real quant. Uh, yeah, we're working on securitizations here. So a lot of people consider securitizations actual quants. If you're making loans um, and kind of putting them into securitized products, that's kind of like financial engineering. Again, they're not derivatives, but you're engineering financial products, which are then packaged and sold. And yes, we sell these to private investors like hedge funds, for example. So Yes, uh, a decade later, and I am actually doing uh, the financial engineering work that I have admitted in the past I didn't do. I did model development, which realistically, in a way, in a loan sense, it's kind of like financial engineering. You're engineering financial products. Um, this isn't buy side where you're like, oh, everything already exists, and I'm just going to buy this and sell this and then buy more of this and then sell more of this. And that's just what you're doing, right? You're just picking and choosing to buy and sell. Like, Cool. Um, but no, we're actually engineering financial products and setting thresholds and limits and risk metrics around this framework here. Um, but this kind of piece here with Peter Carr going back to, you know, he just knew it was done industry wide. Like he needed to get back into solving the problems. Uh, this is another thing that's kind of torn me into two pieces here. Uh, where at Agora, I am actually in two pieces. I am literally building models and frameworks and putting everything together. Um, unfortunately, I don't think anyone can take out my brain and I can give it to them and then they can like run with it from there. Um, you have to really understand this. And so we're going to bring in other people. And I'm going to try to train them to understand uh, the theoretical essence of this, right? Understanding the math is fine, but it doesn't get you to why I did things or why the coding and the programming is set up the way it is. Uh, but anyways, we have lots of interesting problems to solve. Uh, that kind of torn piece of I still want to be able to do the work and do the management and, you know, typical Dimitri here just can't make up his mind um, sitting in two roles at the same time. Um, but having that ability to sit on both sides has been frustrating. Uh, it's been, I don't know, 
pretty burdensome as well. But at the same time, um, I don't know if I can let go. Like I don't, I'm not going to move to that position where I'm just doing management and I'm going to get rid of all my quant research and endeavors, interests and problems. Uh, the most value I can add to a firm is actually the quant research piece here. The management, the organization and stuff too, you need someone who understands all the modeling and the dynamics and politics and all that. Um, yes, that needs to get done too. So I'm kind of stuck in these two worlds with this. Um, but And then the pay, let's just talk about pay here. Academia pays like crap. Um, so the pay is not great in academia to what I'm already making. Uh, it'd be really hard for me to step back again because I enjoy doing the problem solving I'm doing at Agora. Uh, I enjoy working on the teams. I enjoy solving these solutions and seeing a firm grow and see the employees grow. Um, again, now working in academia, you can see the students grow and you move them along, but then they they, they leave and then you don't usually see them, you know, finish off into a, a fuller, uh, you know, career here. So, and then the last piece here is going to be a uh, tenure as well. I think Peter Carr hit this right on the head and had this just nailed down. Uh, if I was going to go to academia one, I don't want to move. So that's a big blow for most programs out there, right? If I was going to do it, it'd have to be here in Dallas somewhere. That's one. And the second piece, this is going to just be the tenure piece. Like I want an actual stake in the university of I am an actual piece I am a contributing member to this university. Um, I would have to be made tenure. So you would have to pay me well. You'd have to give me tenure and I don't want to move. Um, these are all three strikes against the program that reached out to me. So that is why I have stayed where I'm at. This is why I'm not looking to move into um, academia. Now, yes, there's part of me that wants to write papers and publish and travel and you know meet with other quants here. This is one of the reasons we are doing the DFW quaint quant conference here. Uh, I want to find people that are local. Uh, and we're bringing in speakers even from like New York City and a few other places if I can get them all the details sorted out. Uh, we have some amazing speakers coming. So I'm really excited just to talk to the speakers. And then I'm hoping we have a lot of industry professionals come so I can talk to you guys and work with you. And then finally have students come to this event. Um, so part of me is trying to get that academia-esque NIST, the thing that I want to really do, the academic piece I love, the passion I have for just reading and doing research. There's not a deadline. You're not being pushed and rushed and poked and prodded um, into the actual day job. Um, but it's been hard to get everything up and running. And part of this is, you know, enjoyment. Part of it is stress. Part of it is pain. Uh, but it's what it's like working at a startup. Working at a bank is very very structured. Uh, I'm not at the banks anymore though. So anyways, that is why I've turned down that program. Um, this is something you should think about though, as you're an industry practitioner is, you know, it always seems like academia is this great place. And then you start, you know, get, if you get an offer on the table or someone starts talking about it and you really dig deep into there, uh, you realize the compensation is going to be lower. Uh, there's, you still got to do grants and all that nonsense, which is why you want the tenure because you don't want to have to jump through so many hoops and dance and make everyone happy. Um, and then you can really fix the program and make it great, which most programs suck because there's not someone that's really qualified to put the program together, design it, and then tell the professors, you know, go do your own thing. Uh, we don't want you in this program. We want these classes and bring in industry practitioners or really good academics. So anyways, those are my thoughts here. Something to think about if you were kind of toying with the idea of academia versus industry. I still think industry trumps it. Um, academia, oh, it's it's the thing I, I always look at is the grass is always greener. It just, it looks so amazing. It looks so beautiful. Uh, especially when I travel back to like University of Michigan, I miss the campus. I miss the feel. I miss the students. Um, but I'm still getting this, a lot of the conferences that I go to, like the Princeton conference last year um, and the FinHat conference this year and last year at UTD. Like I'm still trying to get that feel and that academic um, kind of fun and excitement there. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.